Hey gang and welcome back to another awesome video and in this one I'm going to teach you how to create your own HDRI maps using Adobe Photoshop. This means that you'll be able to draw your own lighting into HDRI and then import that back into DAS Studio to light your scenes. Now obviously this doesn't uh, allow you to draw the HDRI on the screen um, so you'll have to use your own backgrounds and stuff but this is a great way to use a memory efficient lighting method for individuals in a scene that means you can be a lot more creative. So what I've got here is a template that I've created and there's a link to download this in the description below. And this is what we're going to be working with. So what I'd suggest you do is download that template, pause this video, and then come back to me when you've got the template loaded into Photoshop and you're ready to go. So here we are, we've got the template and you're looking at the same screen that I am more or less. What essentially we've got here is colored markers along an 8,000 pixel wide image. So this is an 8K HDRI, which is perfectly fine for what we're using it for because we're not gonna be drawing this into our renders so this is only going to be used to light our subjects and what i've done is i've marked out the back the front the right and the left this is relative to the subject obviously left and right go the other way around if you're looking at them if you're reading them correctly but in terms of your actual subject this is um, the side that's going to be lit and those are contained within a folder which i've named markers turn off when saving as hdr which means that when you actually save this out as an HDRI, you're going to turn that off so that you have completely black and then you draw your actual lighting on this top layer here, which is what we're about to do. So these shaded areas at the top and bottom indicate what is more or less directly overhead and underneath your subject. So if you wanted to draw a light source directly over the top of their head, then this is where you would do it. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to do that first. So we're gonna simulate a direct light source right over the subject's head. So making sure we've got our draw your lighting here layer selected, we're going to select our marquee tool and we're going to mark out an area that's probably about the same size, maybe slightly bigger than our shaded out area. And then we're going to select our brush tool. Now we're gonna go into our color picker and what you're going to notice immediately is that the color picker is different when you're in 32-bit mode and that's because this is a luminance value with a color and not just a color so what we're going to do is we're going to make this a ever maybe we'll add a bit of a slightly yellowy light to kind of simulate a bit of sunlight so we're going to select a yellow down here and then we're going to come back on here and then you'll notice that it's going to ask for your intensity and stops. Now we want this to be a couple of stops brighter, so I'm going to select a plus two in this top layer there. What that means is that it's got four times as much light as the kind of base value. So we're going to hit OK. Making sure that my opacity and my flow are both at 100%. I'm going to simply paint over this marquee tool like so. Now I'm going to turn off our folder so that it's completely empty other than our light and our dark. And now I'm going to do a file, save as, and I'm going to call this test. And I'm going to check the radiance value here in our file drop down type menu. And you'll see that it becomes test.htr. So we're going to hit save there. And the next thing we're going to go is we're going to jump into DAS Studio and see how that looks. So we've jumped into DAS Studio and I've loaded a sample scene into, into DAS. And now I have selected our test HDR. There you go, just to prove that it's the correct one as our environment map. Now I've ramped up the brightness because I'm not 100% sure if two stops is enough for what we're asking of it. So I've changed the environment intensity and the environment map to both fives. And now we're going to jump into NVIDIA I remote and see what it looks like. So there you go. As you can see, 
the light directly overhead which is pretty much exactly what we were expecting and the light intensity actually with the with the two fives is about right so that's pretty good guess from me not blowing my own trumpet or anything of course so we're gonna jump back into photoshop and we're gonna make some changes to our hdr right and we're going to see what looks we can achieve here we are back in photoshop so i'm gonna bring back our markers and i'm actually gonna delete the content from that layer that we've already added because we don't want a like completely overhead so what we're going to do is we're going to try and simulate the lighting setup that we had from my previous video which is a pretty good lighting setup so what we're going to do is we need a rim light so we want lighting behind but we want it to overlap slightly into the uh, right and left sides as well so let's try almost exactly 50 50 over the line we're going to grab our light here uh, in our brush tool and we're going to paint that like so now the next bit we're going to have to do a bit either side of this line because obviously the other side of the back is there so we're going to draw that one there and then we're going to do the same on the other side. I think we'll make that slightly bigger because I think it's a bit too small. There we go. That's good. So what I'm going to do actually is I'm going to create a small, what we call a catch light, which is a light that goes directly into the subject's eyes to illuminate their eyes. I think that might be a bit too high. So we'll try there. So by all means, copy exactly what I'm doing here and see what results we get and then I want a slightly brighter light to cover this kind of portion of the picture just kind of like one side of her face and for this one I'm actually going to go up a little bit more so I'm going to go to three stops brighter for this light like so and it's going to be interesting to see what the outcome of this is because obviously we are going to have to maybe rotate the HDRI a little bit dependent on what results we get. So we're going to go to File, Save As. We're going to change back to HDRI. And we're going to call this one Test 2. And we're going to save it. And we're going to jump back into DAS Studio. So here we are in DAS Studio. We're going to change our HDRI to test 2. I'm already in NVIDIA IRA mode, so it should just start loading that already. And I'm going to turn that off. And now we need to reduce the values a little bit because that's obviously quite bright. In fact, I think we can put these back to default now. So what we've achieved is we're getting the front light, but it's kind of drowning out the lights from behind. So I'm going to actually turn on Draw Dome so that I can see where everything is. The best thing to do is to jump into Perspective View. There's a small one. There's our catch light and there's our main light. So they are currently off to the wrong side. So we need to come back to there. Change that back to zero. So we've got a small side light there. Small side light there. Big main light and a catch light. And as you can see, they are absolutely massive. And they're also about, I want to say... 45 degrees out so let's try shopping that to 45 degrees like so so now we should have our big light almost directly in front of our subject and the catch light there so if we jump back into camera one you can see the light sources are very very big so we can make these changes fairly easily we're going to jump back into photoshop make some tweaks and then come right back. 
So here we are. I'm going to use the marquee tool. Now the cat's light itself was okay, but it was a bit high. So I'm actually going to drag it down slightly using the marquee tool. Now I'm going to select just our main light like so. And I'm going to use Control and T to bring up the transform tool and we're going to just make this a bit smaller and a bit narrower and pop it in there like so now these two were okay but they were very very dull so we're going to select those again we're going to brighten them a little bit so we're gonna use our control key while we've got the marquee tool selected oh that's no good undo that shift key sorry my fault select that one and select that one or alternatively we could hold control click on the thumbnail and then hold down alt and just unselect the bits that we don't want so we've now just got the items that we want to draw over again now i'm going to actually make these plus four so I'm going to draw over that. Now you'll notice that I'm drawing over them, but I'm not seeing any physical difference. And that's because obviously white is white. Once you've got as bright white as you possibly can, it's not going to change anymore. So we're going to go to save as. Now we've made those changes. Go back to radiance HDR mode. Change that. Save back over the top of test 2 HDR. Yes, that's fine. Come back into Daz Studio. Now we're going to come out of that and now we're going to go back to browse and change test 2 again and it should load. So now we can see that it's actually quite a nice flattering lighting setup. You've got a very soft light down the side, a very soft light down this side and then the main light illuminating the front of the subject and this is all just done using an HDR lighting that we have created using our template in Adobe Photoshop. So I hope you found that useful. I hope you enjoy using the template and experimenting with your own lighting setups. I look forward to seeing your results. By all means drop me comments in the section below and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks very much. Bye bye.